O oh Lord God, helper of those who seek you, I see you in the garden of paradise, and I do not know what I see, because I see nothing visible. I know this alone, that I know that I do not know what I see, and that I can never know. The number of video games I have played over the years is far too numerous to count, but I can recall very few that have ever breached the wall between where the game ends and where reality begins. The Witness is one of those games. Spend enough time in its painstakingly handcrafted world, and your view of reality outside of the game starts to shift. What you have learned cannot be contained in the confines of the island, and it will spill out into everyday life, possibly even driving you a little insane. At least that was my experience during my first playthrough, and it's something I will never forget. I will try my best not to spoil anything during this review, and if there's ever any footage or mention of something secret, I'll let you know before it comes up. Talking about the game in general is sort of a mini-spoiler, so I will say this. If you want to know up front if The Witness is worth playing, yes, turn off this review, go buy it on Steam, and go in completely blind. If you need a little convincing though, stick around and hopefully I can persuade you. The Witness was released six years ago, and since then has received a wide spectrum of reviews. Some love it, some find it a decent puzzle game lacking direction and variety, and some people, well, some people downright hate it. I, on the other hand, am obsessed. I know my love for the game is going to make this review biased, but honestly, I don't care. The game is a masterpiece, and I think I can objectively prove that. Or at least that's what Jonathan Blow whispers to me at night. So, what is The Witness? At a base level, it's a puzzle game. You interact with panels, explore an island, and complete puzzles to unlock new areas and paths. Beyond that, though, it's a reality-changing experience, though it seems not everyone agrees. There are critics that claim that the game is a collection of serial box puzzles where all you do is draw a line from point A to point B, and that the game never strays from that formula, even in its later hours. While that might be mechanically true, the game offers a vast amount of depth past its simple facade and there are fascinating moments to explore for those who are open to finding them. The experience you have while playing The Witness is as deep as you allow it to be, and it rewards you for looking past what, at first, seems like a collection of simple single panel puzzles. Every solution you find, every panel you complete, adds to your understanding of the rules of the world, and eventually leads you to an epiphany that I don't dare spoil here. It's really something you have to witness for yourself. The pun completely intended. I could go on for hours about the depth of the witness and all the possible hidden meanings behind the various hints you can find on the island, but there are other reviews that have taken that plunge and I'd rather not double up on the madness. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. When you launch the witness for the first time, you might expect a tutorial. Well, no. Not in the sense you might think. As the screen fades in from black, you are shown an icon for your system's respective movement controls, and as you approach your first puzzle, another icon indicating the button that interacts with the world. In front of you sits a panel, a simple shape, a circle, and a line. You notice that the circle is emanating rings, and that it makes a sound every time the rings are generated. You also notice that your cursor, now appearing on the screen, is also a circle, and fits perfectly inside the shape in front of you. You click, and now you understand. The witness has just taught you everything you need to know about how you interact with the puzzles in the world, all from a few icons and audiovisual cues. There are no text boxes, no on-screen prompts to guide you through the puzzle, no little fairy incessantly telling you to listen. There is simply a circle and a line, and that's all you need to know. Normally, I would advocate that a puzzle game should include a more involved tutorial to lay down the groundwork for the rules of the world. This makes sense when the mechanics you are presented with are complex enough that intuition can't crack the code, but that's where the genius of the witness design comes into play. The base mechanic for all 500 plus puzzles in the game is shown to you within seconds of entering the world. Eventually, the rules that govern your solution to the puzzles do become more complicated, but those are still built upon the simple foundation of interacting with your very first panel. And even when the more difficult rules are introduced, they are conveyed step by step so you understand what is expected, and where you went wrong. This is done without ever showing you a single line of text or any on-screen hints. Just a circle and a line. After solving the first two tutorial puzzles, you climb out of the darkness and into a beautiful sunlit garden. I always took this as a metaphor for the transition between the darkness of ignorance and the illumination of knowledge, though I tend to think about these things too much, so maybe you are just climbing up some stairs. 
But what is true is that you now know something you didn't before, and with that knowledge you can start to explore the beautiful and mysterious island that the witness is set upon. Except the marsh. I don't care for the marsh. The puzzles in the garden are simple and intuitive. There are no extra rules or complexity to be found here, at least none that a new player would notice. To protect you from yourself, a large gate stands blocking the exit from this area. Finish all the puzzles, and you are now free to traverse the island. There are 11 main biomes you will explore. The Island of Symmetry, the Desert, the Quarry, the Logging Camp, the Keep, the Monastery, the Treehouse, the the marsh, the tropical forest, the town, and the bunker. Each of these zones have sub-areas to explore and contain a unique puzzle mechanic. Some even combine rules you have learned before to build upon the complexity of the puzzles found in that area. Following the path after leaving the garden, it will take you to what, I assume, is the intended first zone, the Island of Symmetry. And I say intended because in reality, there is no first zone. You are free to move and explore the island as you wish. Finding a new area only means that you must learn the rules to those puzzles to progress. What this can lead to at times is finding panels that have established rules you have not yet learned. This can be frustrating because you don't know what you don't know. If you can't find the solution to a puzzle, you have no idea why or how to fix it because the rules are a mystery. The solution to this, which I know others have criticized, is you simply move on. You leave that area and explore until you find puzzles that you can solve. There is no physical barrier stopping you from progressing in another location, only lack of knowledge, which you will eventually gain. I know this frustrates some people, but the other side of this design is to gate off areas until the game thinks you are ready to access them, which I believe would ruin the magic of exploring the island. Okay, so why are we completing these puzzles in the first place? In each biome mentioned above, there is a laser. Completing all the panels in the respective biome activates the laser. Why? Well, you don't know why. Not yet. All you know is a giant yellow box opens up and a laser slowly assembles, turning until... Oh wait! It points somewhere! You might not know the purpose of the laser yet, but now you have a clue. A location. The consistency of this design is what makes the witness a masterpiece in my opinion. All of the information you need, all the clues that are given to you, exist within the world itself. In another game, after activating the laser, an on-screen prompt might have appeared, or a message saying, something has unlocked in the distance. For me, these methods break immersion. But in The Witness, all the context you need is built into the structure of the world itself. An elegant way of directing the player without sacrificing the experience in the game. This design choice is also essential for the secrets that The Witness holds, but that is something I will leave for you to find yourself. Beyond finishing puzzles to activate these cryptic lasers, you will find other items on the island that contribute to its mystery. There are random single panels lying around, audio logs that have quotes from famous public figures or philosophers, and doors with complex puzzles leading to an item used to unlock videos in the underground theater. Then, there is the lake. And now this might be a minor spoiler, so if you want to go into the game completely blind, skip to here. In the middle of the island is a lake. At first glance, it appears to be nothing more than a body of water being fed by a waterfall from the mountain. But look hard enough, and you will start to notice the shape looks a lot like the island itself. In fact, it looks almost exactly like it. Well, that's because it is! The lake acts as an overhead map of the island, and each object in the lake represents something you can complete. Lanterns are lasers, fountains are obelisks, the purpose of which I will leave you to discover, flowers are audio logs, Clams are the aforementioned complex door puzzles or bunkers, and triangle leaves represent those random single panels. To me, this is genius. It's another way that the witness gives you information about your progress through the game by using the world itself. When I first discovered this, it blew my mind. Although a little cryptic to discover, I cannot overstate how much I love this idea. Again, the consistency of design flows through the game. You might notice at this point, I have been hesitant to discuss what the goal of the game is, how to beat it in other words. That's because I want you to figure out how to do that for yourself. I want you to go on the same journey I did. I have heard that the game Outer Wilds is also a masterpiece and should be played through completely blind. The Witness is exactly like that, and I think I have given you just enough information to entice you to give it a shot. And if I haven't, hopefully the visual style of the game will. The graphics are beautiful, the art direction is consistent, and easily lets you know what is a puzzle and what isn't. The environment even plays a part in solving some puzzle panels in ways I did not expect. 
You can get lost just roaming around and looking at the trees or the structures or the ocean. It's a relaxing place to be, and sometimes that is much needed after banging your head against a puzzle for an hour. The audio also complements the game very well. There is no music, just the ambient effects on the island. You hear the water, your footsteps, the wind blowing around you. It creates a calming atmosphere while also piquing your curiosity. Focusing on puzzles is also a lot easier when you don't have a soundtrack blaring in your ears. All of the design choices in The Witness are exactly what they should be. And maybe that's why it took seven years to complete. Seven years sounds like a long time, and it is. But what came out of that effort was a masterpiece. There are other aspects of the game that I wish I could share with you here. Details that would further illustrate how completely insane the attention to detail in The Witness is. But that would spoil one of the most exciting experiences that I have ever had in a game. And I hope you can experience it too. If you haven't already... Go out and buy The Witness and get lost within its world. Uncover the secrets it holds, and let what it teaches you infect your mind and perception of reality. Oh, and I forgot, there's a boat. <laughs>